What if this guy told you that he would discovered a new science? Not only could it heal every physical disease, but it could harmonize the body with the spirit. It could cure sin itself and make us into people who acted in accordance with the will of God. Is it a pill? Is it surgery? Is it some kind of chip he plants in your brain? Nope. All he has to do is crack your back a few times. If that sounds too good to be true, just wait. It gets even better. Guess how he found out about this long hidden secret? A ghost told him. Ah! <laughs> you might say that sounds like a religion, or you might say that sounds like woo woo hippie bullshit, but that's exactly what Dee Dee Palmer, the founder of chiropractic, claimed. Daniel David Palmer was born in Port Perry, Ontario in 1845. He immigrated to the United States a couple of decades later and worked as a magnetic healer for nine years. He also studied, in his words, Christian science, faith cure, mind cure, metaphysics, and osteopathy. But chiropractic wasn't just a synthesis or an innovation on these. Palmer had another passion, one which would lead him to the revelation of this new and revolutionary form of treatment. Spiritualism. In the late 19th century, there was a rapid rise in spiritualism. The term spiritualism is often misused today, employed to mean spirituality or to identify a worldview that's spiritual but not religious. But spiritualism, in Palmer's sense, was the practice of communicating with the dead. Think of seances, Ouija boards, and so forth. Palmer was in contact with an intelligent spiritual being, he said, named Dr. Jim Atkinson, who revealed a novel and revolutionary form of healing. What sort of thing could this new science do? Let's hear about Ed. Ed was 17. The left side of his body was paralyzed from birth. According to Palmer, he had not uttered a word that was understood by his parents or friends, and he had the mental capacity of a three-year-old. After a few weeks of adjustment, Ed was cured, and not just physically. His mentality and language, wrote Palmer, was that of others of like age and environments. You might think that Palmer was making it up, and hey, maybe he was, but let's look at the case of William Harvey Lillard. Lillard sustained an injury to his back, an event which also damaged his hearing. Advocates for chiropractic medicine often quote a letter, supposedly by Lillard himself, testifying to the power of this treatment. I was deaf 17 years, he wrote, and I expected to always remain so, for I had doctored a great deal without any benefit. I had long ago made up my mind not to take any more ear treatments, for it did me no good. Last January, Dr. Palmer told me that my deafness came from an injury in my spine. This was new to me, but it is a fact that my back was injured at the time I went deaf. Dr. Palmer treated me on the spine. In two treatments, I could hear quite well. That was eight months ago. My hearing remains good. What exactly was going on here? Palmer grounds his supposed science on metaphysical principles. According to him, there is an innate intelligence which runs the universe. This intelligence, which the Christian religion calls God, is an all-powerful force on which matter depends. He believed that we were all born with a portion of this innate intelligence, which is present in each individual, never sleeps nor tires, recognizes neither darkness or distance, and is not subject to material laws. It continues to care for and direct the organic functions of the body as long as the soul holds body and spirit together. This intelligence is expressed, according to Palmer, through the nervous system. Disease isn't what we've been led to believe. On the contrary, the mental and physical condition known as disease is due to misalignments in the neuroskeleton, which serves as the nervous system's protector. Palmer believed that death was only the end of the physical body. The spirit went on after death, but it could be in quite an unfortunate state if the intelligence flowing through the nervous system were improperly channeled. Whatever flaws or virtues we possess in this life would pass with us into the next world. Our sickness, our physical and mental deficiencies could haunt us in the afterlife. This made the chiropractor's duty an urgent one. How, in a nation that claimed to be Christian, could such an unorthodox practice take hold? Living in our comfortable, relatively peaceful era, it's hard to imagine the devastation that came as a result of the Civil War. 
According to the White House Historical Association, the Civil War resulted in approximately 750,000 American fatalities, nearly equal to the total number of American deaths in the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, and the Korean War combined. Bodies were left on the battlefield by the scores. Families all over the country were without the knowledge of what happened to their sons, fathers, and brothers in their final moments. America, with its broken heart, turned to the guidance of mediums. First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln, the wife of President Abraham Lincoln, offers a typical example of how spiritualism provided a palliative for grief. Mrs. Lincoln was a woman well acquainted with loss. She buried three of her four children. Her son, Willie, died during their time at the White House. Disconsolate, she turned to seances to contact her child from the other world. She may have held as many as eight seances in the White House and told her half-sister, Willie lives. He comes to me every night and stands at the foot of the bed with the same sweet, adorable smile that he always has had. She further remarked that he didn't always come alone. Little Eddie, another son she lost, is sometimes with him. After the death of her husband, spirit photographer William H. Mumler took the following picture. Today, Mumler's photographs are recognized as fakes, but his work provided profound, albeit false, comfort to many. In the wake of the Civil War, America suffered a crisis of identity. The principles of liberty and of faith on which we were supposedly founded were rightfully questioned. A nation that could buy and sell human beings, where brother could slaughter brother, was due, in the minds of many, for a change in spiritual direction. It was these wounds, as much as any physical disease, that Palmer sought to heal. Chiropractic, according to him, didn't just repair our bodies. It reconnected our souls to the universal intelligence that, being God, is the source of all goodness. Once we are physically aligned, we'll become morally and spiritually aligned, too. Chiropractic, he wrote, will lessen disease, poverty, and crime, empty our jails, penitentiaries, and insane asylums, and assist us to prepare for the existence beyond the transition called death. It stands to reason that, if Palmer were right, the proliferation of chiropractic would lead us into a world that, compared to the horrors of the 19th century, would appear a utopia. Certainly, if prisons and asylums were emptied, the citizens of this golden age wouldn't own slaves, and war, civil or otherwise, would be a relic of a barbaric past. As bad as the 19th century was, though, the hundred years that followed it are the bloodiest on record, and those who receive chiropractic treatment, while their backs may feel a bit better, don't suddenly become bodhisattvas. Palmer's revelation, while it may seem peculiar to us, is characteristic of a new understanding of the relationship between body and spirit. You've probably heard of Scientology. As with, for example, psychoanalysis, Palmer replaces the language of sin with the language of pathology. According to scholar Candy Gunther Brown, chiropractic developed out of vitalistic, harmonial religious philosophies envisioned by their adherents as alternatives to Christianity. Dr. Brown quotes B.J. Palmer, the son of chiropractic's founder, who said that no chiropractor would pray on his knees to some invisible power. Palmer's God, whether or not he likes to admit it, is a hobbled one. This universal intelligence needs the chiropractor's hands to heal his children and to reunite them to him. Prayer to such a being would be unnecessary. As B.J. wrote, innate intelligence within man asserts that the only possible cause and cure are within man.